It was Christmas time in London, and there was a man named Firebutton Steve. He was the most knowledgeable about Resident Evil amongst all the members of the First Aid Spray podcast. A man without problems, but at the same time, he was a miserable git, convinced of Resident Evil's decline. A day before Christmas, Steve and his clerk Adam were working in the office. Adam, as always, was counting his ports of Resident Evil 4, while Steve was counting the minutes to the release of Resident Evil 8, I mean Resident Evil Village, convinced it was going to be a stinker. Man, I am so bored of playing Umbrella Corps, Steve. Why won't you let me in on any of your Resident Evil collection? You see, dear Adam, they're all in near mint condition, and playing will devalue them. I want to be able to get top dollar when I trade them in. Games are meant to be played and enjoyed. Where's your first aid spray spirit? First aid spray is just an excuse not to work. Besides, what reason do you have to be happy? Resident Evil is so poor nowadays. Come on, Steve. What reason do you have to be sad? You have so many Resident Evil games. Ah, what trite nonsense this time of year. I swear. All right, don't get angry. Angry? Why wouldn't I? I podcast with a bunch of fools. Resident Evil. What is Resident Evil? It's just a thing you buy with money you don't have. A thing you see yourself becoming more confused by the plot and the remakes of ruining the integrity of classics. Like the Dark Side Chronicles. Don't get me started on the 40 minutes it took me to complete Remake 3. But what about Carlos's new hair and Mr. X's hat? Look. I know that there are some things Capcom didn't do right, some things they didn't take advantage of, but currently Resident Evil's actually in a really good place. People seem to be getting along just fine in the community, it's a time of forgiveness, love and charity. It's a time when people open their hearts to one another, and that's why I say, blessed be Resident Evil. Well, wasn't that a wonderful speech? I wonder why you don't work for Capcom. <sighs> Look. Why don't you come to Sai's house tonight? Sherwin's bringing a prototype copy of the Resident Evil 3 board game. All of the Pueblo people will be there. <laughs> How quaint. Thanks, but I'll pass. As you wish, Steve. Look, Sai has finished writing all of next year's scripts and spent an unfair amount of time bleeping out swears from the podcast, so I think it's time to knock off for the day. You're leaving already? Fine. Your work is finished, you can now go, I guess. But top five hats in Resident Evil isn't going to narrate itself. But tomorrow is Christmas, a day to spend with family and loved ones. Preferably the Vickers family. Rad Vickers always does something crazy. Adorable. You'd like the day off, I suppose. Well, yeah, it's Christmas. <laughs> Christmas! That is no excuse. Be here early. T-shirts do not design themselves. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Yes, yes. Merry Christmas. Bah! Burnside. Steve opened the door and Adam went home. Then Steve returned to his desk to finish his scathing review of Resident Evil 6. After a few hours, he closed his laptop and proceeded to leave the office. When he got home, he climbed the steps to his bedroom, sat in a big chair, and started to play Umbrella Corps. Poning the noobs was the only enjoyment the festive season would bring him. Suddenly, he heard moaning, and a strange and loud shambling noise coming from outside. What the devil? Who's making that noise? It's gone 7pm already. Wait. Are you the man from Talk Talk? You were supposed to be here last week. But the strange noise continued until he saw a zombie come through the bedroom door. Bloody hell! Am I dreaming? No, this is not a dream. Sai? Is that you? What do you want from me? Hello survivors and welcome to Steve's Intervention, a terrifying event by Resident Evil fans for Resident Evil fans. Steve, I'm here tonight to warn you. 
You still have the opportunity to change your ways, and if you don't, you'll meet with a terrible fate. Listen well, three zombies will visit you. The first will arrive tomorrow when the clock strikes one, expect the second on the stroke of two, and the third at three o'clock sharp. Well, I must say, I haven't been this confused since Resident Evil Retribution came out. Then the zombie left the room, smashing through the window. Steve went to bed, shaking in fear, and fell asleep. When the clock struck one, Steve was awakened by a strange creature beside his bed. Le- Leather Daddy? Is that you? Storm. <laughs> Sorry, old boy. No, the name is showing. And I am the zombie of Resident Evil Past. Now get out of bed and come with me. The zombie took Steve through time to a small room which Steve started to recognise as his adolescent bedroom. He looked with nostalgia as he remembered the consoles, games and that one poster of the Spice Girls in their undies. A young man was transfixed to the TV playing the original 1996 Resident Evil, barely able to contain his excitement over the realistic graphics. He cannot see or hear us. He is just a shadow from the past. Do you recognize that young boy sitting alone playing? I see. It's me, as a child. But why am I... why is he alone? Search your instincts. You must know the answer. You see, because I wouldn't let anyone else play Resident Evil, That is why I was always alone. That is why my Christmases were so sad and lonely. Come, there is one more stop yet, and we do not have much time. No, please. I'd rather be alone now. I've seen enough. Please go away. Don't torture me. Do not blame me, for I forewarned you. These are merely the shadows of what has already been. Suddenly, they appeared in a different house. Steve was now sitting in a group of people, laughing and playing Resident Evil 3 Nemesis into the early hours. Now, this is strange. I... Are these my friends? No, but they could have been yours if you had shared your love for Resident Evil. I ask you to stop. Please take me home. And Steve appeared back in his own bedroom. Ah, thank goodness. It was just a weird dream. I really have to stop with these generic brand energy drinks. In the silence of the room, the clock struck two. No, Steve. It wasn't a dream. Steve jumped a little as he realised the figure was stood in his doorway. Ah! And I suppose you are the zombie of Resident Evil present. Yes, I am. But you can just call me Jordan. I have much to show you. Log on to my YouTube channel and hurry. We cannot be late. Steve went to Serial Box 64 on his mobile device, secretly wishing he could just go on Facebook. Suddenly, the bedroom vanished, and Steve found himself on a busy street. There were many people queued at the gaming store, talking and murmuring with excitement. Everybody was happy. Well, everybody looks so... so excited. Jovial, even. <laughs> yes, they are. It's the release of Resident Evil 3 Remake. What did you expect? You mean that they're all happy because of a remake guaranteed to be inferior to the original? It even has multiplayer. What kind of a sham is that? Bah. Yes. Today they can forget their problems and just enjoy playing with their friends. They will enjoy it for what it is, safe in the knowledge that the classics are still valid. 
Then the zombie clicked his fingers, and Steve was suddenly at Sai's house. Through the window, Steve could see the first aid spray team laughing and playing games. Ah, well, is this where they live? I don't see any shelves of unopened near mint Resident Evil merch. Of course. With the little money the podcast brings in, it's mostly pre-owned for Sai. Steve looked on as the jovial friends gathered around a Resident Evil 4 branded GameCube to play Remake, but the screen just remained blank. No, no, this is... this is wrong. What's wrong with it? Why doesn't it work? It's pretty old, and patreon.com slash fa-spray-pod isn't bringing in enough for the repairs, so maybe it's time is up, and this poor GameCube will die. Die? But surely there must be something that can be done. Please. Zombie, I implore you, tell me if it will die. I see it sitting in a bin in the corner. If the future is not changed, it will certainly die. Oh. Oh, no. No. What do you care, anyway? Your mint condition one will be able to get top dollar when you trade it in. At that moment, Steve realised that those were his own words and felt sorry for himself. Suddenly, he was laying down. Hmm. Am I in my own bed again? As he sat up, another zombie was perched on his bed frame. This time, it was a tiny wet owl. Who are you? First came the zombie of Resident Evil Past, then came the zombie of Resident Evil Present. Therefore, you must be the zombie of Resident Evil yet to come. Are you here to show me the future and how it can change? I was supposed to say that. Anyways, I'm James. I think you should come with me and see. The zombie gestured towards the door. Steve followed him to the street in front of his office. Four people stood out front, talking and shaking their heads. I know these people. I... I do business with them. We're friends. These people like me, but... What is it they're saying about me? Poor old Facebook Steve. I know. I feel sorry for him. They told me he's not even completed Resident Evil 8. Uh, I mean Resident Evil Village on easy. Who's gonna help him? No one. You know that he always liked to play alone. Looks like things haven't gone well, Steve. You haven't even got past the Akuma miniboss. Why? I don't understand! You forgot what really makes Resident Evil fun. Getting together with your friends and enjoying the community. It's all pointless without that. You've become a shell of a man. So what? I'll complete village on my own. Why do I need friends? The zombie owl said nothing. Then everything turned dark, and Steve appeared in a foggy and cold place. Is this the... This is the wrong franchise. Where are we? This is... Ah! A Capcom testing facility. Why did you bring me here? Look over there. That game's tester. Before I get near that tester, Al, tell me. Is this an image of what is, or what can be? The zombie did not answer. Steve went to see the tester. Engraved on a desk plaque was the name Facebook Steve. The tester was playtesting Resident Evil the movie The Game. Tears streaming from his eyes, but forced to play on nonetheless. Steve fell to his knees. No! Zombie! Owlet! Listen to me. I have changed. Why show me all this if I've lost all hope? Please, tell me that I can change everything you have shown me. I will honour Resident Evil in my heart. I will live in the past, in the present, and, indeed, in the future. I will not forget the lessons that all you zombies have taught me. Oh, please tell me that this is not my fate. 
In his anguish, he took the zombie's wing, but the zombie rejected him, and Steve woke up in his bed. <gasps> oh, oh, thank you. I've been given another chance. I'll never forsake Resident Evil again. Then he heard the church bells striking. It was Christmas morning. Steve immediately went to FASpraypod.com and ordered t-shirts and mugs for all of his family and friends. Then he grabbed his near mint Resident Evil collection and started distributing it to anyone who wanted to play. After that, Steve made a very special visit to the first aid spray office, gifting the crew a like new GameCube so they could play remake to their heart's content. And then they all laughed about how Steve Burnside died. The end. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the First Aid Spray podcast throughout 2020. And for myself, Jordan, I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and a brand new in box sealed red labeled New Year. Stay safe, and we'll see you in 2021. Happy Christmas, everyone! James here to tell you that the only thing I want for this giving season is for us all to appreciate what we have and how fortunate we are to have it. This includes our passion for one of the greatest video game series in history, Resident Evil. I love you all very much, and I hope 2021 brings us more joy than whatever this year has been. Ciao! What's up sprayers, Boy Wonder Adam here, aka Ad Vickers, just wanting to wish you a very Merry Christmas, slash Happy Holidays, slash non-denominational time of year. I hope you get everything that you want, especially that brand new first aid spray t-shirt that we've all been coveting. Um, Leather Daddy apparently brings it at night, so be careful. Uh, what, what was that, Sai? What, we're not referring to them as sprayers? I thought we agreed on sprayers. Oh. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas, I guess. Hey everyone, Merry Christmas from me, Sherwin, and everybody at the First Aid Spray Podcast. Um, you've been an amazing audience this year, and it's been a really, really, really crap year, so it's really, really appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you all have an incredible break, and I'm looking forward to an awesome new year, much the same as I am. Ah, so you've made it to the portion of the video where I have to give a Christmas message. Well, well, let's go back to my normal voice for a second, and Merry Christmas. And, uh, you know, I hope you're all having a good, safe winter season in what has been truly a uh, historic year. And I want to give an extra thank you to literally every key worker there on the ground, be you someone who's working in the vaccine labs, or you're a delivery person, or you just work in retail, because by Jove, you've had it rough and you deserve all the thanks you can get. Merry Christmas, I've been Steve. Merry Christmas and happy holiday survivors from me and the rest of the team to all of you. Thank you for supporting us throughout this year and we hope you enjoyed this little Christmas special. And an extra special thanks from me to the rest of the team who have to continually put up with me bothering them about doing certain bits and pieces. This all came together in very short order um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. See you all in 2021. was the night before Christmas, and all through the land, not a thing was stirring, even a bucket of sand. The Wesker stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that Lever Daddy wouldn't be there. The first aid spray listeners were nestled snug in their beds, while visions of stars danced in their heads. And Jill in her beret and I in my sunglasses, had just set our brains to teach some bioterror classes. When out on the lawn there arose such a sound, I sprang from my desk to see what would be found. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. 
When what to my weird red eyes did appear, but a crashed biotank, and it filled me with fear. With a lumbering monster throwing a paddy, I knew in a moment it must be the daddy. More rapid than Cerberus, his buddies they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Cyniac, now James, now Jordan and Steve, on Sherwin, on Adam, it's time to believe. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop lever daddy he flew, with his sack full of virus and the Pueblo boys too. And then in a twinkling I heard from the street, the pounding and stomping of his big black feet. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney Leather Daddy came with a bound. He was dressed all in leather from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all black and covered in soot. A sack of G-Firus he had flung on his back, and he looked like the merchant opening his sack. His eye how it twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like scar tissue, his nose pretty scary. His weird mouth was stretched like a bow. The fake beard on his chin was as white as the snow. He had a flat face and a little round belly. He grabbed old Brad Vickers and crushed him like jelly. He was scary and huge, nothing like an elf. I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon let me know I had everything to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, filled the stockings with viruses, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a stare, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his tank, to his team gave a nod, and away they all flew to record a new pod. But I heard him explain, as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas, young 